So my name is Gonzalo Oliveira. I am a screenwriter slash producer from Portugal, currently working in London in the UK. I work right now for Goldcrest. It's a post-production studio. I am an assistant producer there and I kind of do that while on the side I work on personal projects. I also have a studio in Portugal called Iperion, where I work uh, again as a script writer and we make films and yeah, that's the film business stuff, the usual stuff. I'm mainly working on those two companies right now. So I decided to ingress in film basically five years ago when I started my BA. I went and did a BA in film back home in Portugal. Basically there I met a lot of people and I kind of didn't know what to do when I started it. But soon enough, I found that I had a real passion for writing and producing as well. So I started connecting to some people there, worked my way into some student films as you normally do, found myself a network. And when I finished that, I came here to, to London to do an MA at the London Film School just to hone my writing skills a little bit better. Better. And when I got off, I decided, okay, now it's time to get a job, which was the right thing to do for me at the time. And that's how I came to know my first job in film at the time when I was just searching for a job. That's my whole path into getting a job in film, I guess, throughout these five years. When I came across my first job in film, which is, it's literally in the name, a first job in film, <laughs> it, it kind of gave me the, the tools to, okay, I needed to go back and start from the beginning again in terms of experience. And my first job in film seemed like the right place to find that space where I could start from the beginning in terms of experience and find myself a first job in film, at least here in London. I just used the jobs board. To be fair, I used fairly little of the other stuff, but I did find it very useful that my first job in film, even though sometimes I would not get the job or I would go to an interview and not get the job, my first job in film tried to give feedback to everyone on why we didn't get the, that particular job or uh, how the, com the company found our applications to be. And that continuously helped me understand how I could get better at trying to find a job. So I think that it, it was mainly that feedback that my first job in film continuously gave to me of uh, how the interviews went or how the application went that allowed me to get better at trying to get a job basically. They're called cliches for a reason and I, I, I gotta fall back on them. Yeah, you just gotta keep trying. You gotta have faith that sometime someone out there will look at you as the right person for the right job. You just gotta keep that passion up. I'd say you have to go out and be kind of entrepreneurial for yourself. If you can't seem to be finding the right things, you should create opportunities for yourself. Maybe talk to people that you know, maybe use the network in my first job in film to go out there and try and create your own network and just put yourself out there, be in as much things as you can be and build yourself a portfolio and just keep trying basically. The life of an assistant producer in London is, is kind of what I was expecting to be doing and also there are the usual unexpected things. It has become very hard to grasp that I get to look at like, or I get to be with high profile stars every day at the ADR studios and I just say, oh, hello. And they say hi back to me. And it's, it's, it's become very weird, but you get used to that. But yeah, my day to day is basically handling finances, doing accounting, handling clients, like I said, managing the production side of post-production, which is you, you get to know the other departments such as the sound department, the editorial, you manage both of them, you connect both of them. You have to be really good with people because, yeah, you really have to put your people skills at work because, I mean, I'm only 23 now, but I go to some editor who's 50 and I have to really push him to deliver things. And sometimes it feels kind of weird because he should be my senior at that position, but you're production, so you have to, to coordinate things. It's basically day to day what you would expect an assistant producer to do. But um, I don't know, it just feels very, feels very real at this point. Yeah. Where I, whereas in Portugal, I used to deal with like short films. Here I'm dealing with high profile films that are coming in the cinema right now. So it's very much handling expectations, controlling yourself and putting your people's skills to work, I guess. I've worked in production before, but never in an office space and um, working with like I, the, 
the area where I sit, it's literally in the middle of the office. So it's me and two other APs. So we're surrounded by the whole other produce, producers and the head of production. And it's very much chaotic in a good sense where everybody's talking. You have to really pick up on what you have to do. You never really stop during the day. You have to be really attentive to what people are saying. So that chaotic part or that um, never stopping part of it was unexpected because when I we used to work in production back, back in Portugal, it was very much one sided, I guess. It was very much me and my other maybe APs or producers as well, uh, dealing it day to day. Whereas here, I'm looking at like five projects on the same day continuously in that chaotic sense, as I said. I, I think it's the people you meet, and I think that's that's the truth for all positions in film. I think film is really a communal experience, and being able to, like I said, managing departments, it's not really just, I'm not there just for, just for the work. I go to the editorial department, and I strike a conversation with the edit guy. Maybe he tells me what he's been doing for the last month or so. I get to learn a little bit of how to do sound, how to do grading. The people you meet and seeing the beautiful things they can do, and you go, wow, I'm, I'm learning so much while I'm, I'm doing my own job. So that's the absolute best best part at working at Gold Quest for sure. So an assistant producer is, first of all, an assistant to a producer. So you have to really facilitate the day of the producer. You have to really do the little jobs that the producer can't do that, that could be like handling a billing, handling a client that the producer can see at that moment because of his or her schedule, managing his or her or her schedule. Like I said, going to other departments if you need to do so. It's really just facilitating the life of a producer so they can manage their own workload a little better. But from time to time, as, and as you grow as an AP and as an assistant producer, you will be given your own projects to deal with. You'll become a little bit more aware of what you need to do without people telling you. So you're very much an assistant, but you're very much a, a producer in training as well. You'll be handling the departments, you'll be handling accounting, you'll be handling clients, very much the people side of, uh, of film, I guess. That's a hard question because uh, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope I do so, but uh, you'll be the face of the company to some project. So let's say a film is going to Goldcrest, they need a producer to handle it. You'll be dealing with all the clients that come in. You'll be the face of the company to that project. If something needs to be done, you'll be the one in the very much the driver's seat to that project. Because as, as we all know, not the, the head of production, even though he's the head of production, he, the, can't know what's going on with all the projects, so you'll very much be the guy for that project inside of the company. It's, it's really just that, and you'll, you'll be handling everything from deliverables, which is very, very much the late part of post-production. You'll be handling grading and who's grading it. You'll be handling sound and who's mixing it. Literally everything from when the project comes in until it goes out of the company. It's very much a separate thing. Unfortunately, in my day job, I do very little writing. Well, I do write like 100 emails per day, but that's not creative writing. But um, screenwriting is very much a, a side thing that I do, even though it, it goes well. And I've been to some film festivals. I have some some things that won contests. It's, it's not my day job. Unfortunately, writing does not pay that well. So right now I'm very much fully, not, not, not fully concentrated in, a, in my AP job. But uh, yeah, writing is a very much a side thing. Never excuse yourself from things like film festivals, network events, go out as much as you can, see as many films as you can, get to know as many people as you can, because uh, it's really very much about who you are and who you know. And I feel like when you get out of a BA or an MA, you're still very doubtful, let's be honest, about what your place even in the world is and God knows in film. Inform yourself, get to know the world a little bit better so you know yourself a little bit better. And you'll see that the people you meet um, at these networking things, maybe even at a screening of a film you like, they will give you advice that you're not expecting to get and that will inform you a little bit better on how to develop your path in, in the industry as well. But a little bit more of a real advice, let's call it real, quote unquote. If you're a writer, keep on writing. If you're a director, direct. If you want to be a gaffer, study light. <laughs> it's very much keep on honing your craft at every chance that you can. Someday the hard work will pay off as soon as you keep on trying, like I said at the beginning.